All right, so first thing is I got to make a claim that I did not invent this recipe. What happened was, um, you know, after the cancer treatment, one of the side effects I've been dealing with is um, I, I can't sleep at night. So I find myself watching a lot of YouTube videos. I try to go to sleep. If I can't sleep, I get up and watch YouTube videos. Anyways, the other night I was watching this YouTube video and I'm not joking. My mouth was watering, physically watering. I've never seen a bread made this way. So obviously I got to do it. Again, we're going to add one egg. Although the original recipe didn't say, it usually helps if your milk and your eggs are at room temperature when you make bread. I don't know if a lot of people know that. It usually helps. Three tablespoons of sugar. 0.62 cups or 150 milliliters of milk and then you're going to need one teaspoon of yeast then you're going to whisk this up <laughs> I'm going to give us about 10 minutes and then I'll bring do you back. is you're going to add your two cups of flour to this bowl and you're going to add a pinch of salt which the recipe actually says one half of a teaspoon or three grams and I kind of know about what that looks like so I'm not even going to measure it because it doesn't really matter that much so there's the amount of salt I'm putting in. Then we are going to use a wooden spoon or whatever you got. We're going to mix this up. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more flour because I know that dough is still just a little too sticky. I think I'm gonna call this right here. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cover this up with plastic. And you're gonna let it rest. I believe that it's 20 minutes. If I'm wrong, I'll edit this video and make it seem like I was right. So I'll bring you back in 20 minutes. Sprinkle flour on this and then flatten it again. You need to roll this out into a rectangle. So you want to take and roll this. We want this to be rectangular though. So the next thing that you're going to do, add more butter, coating it liberally. Now when I was watching this video, I was thinking, man, that's a lot of butter. Because we already got a bunch of butter right now. And we're going to, about to add a whole bunch more, right? But this is the way they did it, and I'm going to do it just the way they did it. My hands are clean, by the way. I've had to wash them several times since the last time the camera was on liberal amounts of butter so we fold it in thirds now and then we're going to roll it out once again making sure we get all of the air out of it All right, I think I'm gonna just call that right there good because I'm rolling off the end here. 
So we are definitely wider. And we are probably a little bit longer. Butter the top surface again. And then we roll it so that the long edge, we're going to kind of create like a log. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this so that the wide edge is facing me. And then I'm going to roll this kind of like a log. So the next thing that we do, hey, I can kind of stretch this out this way and make it pretty much, there's pretty good. So the next thing you're supposed to do, you're supposed to cut it in half and then slice it. But I already know that ain't going to work because my pans are slightly shorter than theirs. So I think I'm probably going to have to do thirds. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do thirds on mine. So I need to cut this. Depending on your size of your pan, you can either do halves like the original recipe or a third, which is what I'm going to do. We're going to cover this with plastic. So we're going to leave it covered 60 minutes. We also want to preheat our oven before that 60 minutes is up to 340 degrees. When I come back, we're going to use an egg wash on the tops of these and stick it in the oven for 22 minutes. Getting very close to time to put these in the oven. One thing you need to do, you need to make an egg wash. You're gonna need one egg and one teaspoon of milk. If you don't have milk, you could use cream, you could use water. I almost always prefer to use milk. One teaspoon of milk. Also, don't forget, you need to set your oven to 340 degrees. The dough has risen. So I got a little brush. It looks like this. All right, so I heard my GoPro shut off, and I'm not sure where it shut off at. Anyways, you can use a dedicated paintbrush. You could use paper towel. I know some people that have took like an old dedicated like makeup brush and they use it or you can buy one of these nifty little brushes off of Amazon for like nothing practically but you're basically coating this dough and what this does the egg causes the dough to get that nice pretty golden color when it's done I think that's about good enough Put these in the oven, 340 degrees, 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so 20 minutes. I'll bring you back when that part is done. Well, here we go. Shutting off the kitchen timer. And I uh, probably should have grabbed a pot holder. I got one right here, actually. Let's go ahead and take these out and see what we look like. Oh yeah. 
I knew that this one had kind of spilled over somewhat because I, I did peek once or twice. You see what I'm talking about there? And then again back there. But the rest of them look fine. Man. Doesn't really have like the smell that you would normally, like my whole house didn't smell heavenly like your bacon bread. And that could be because I do seem like I'm a little, uh, pick up my, drop my pot holder. So I, I think that the reason why that I couldn't actually smell this baking is I am a little bit congested, which is really odd for me to say, cause I'm usually never that way. But so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to set this camera down. We're going to get these out so we can get them on a cooling rack and then I don't know, I'm probably going to try one of these while it's still piping hot. So let me get this all together. I'll be right back. Is when you break this apart, see how it's kind of like layered? See how this is? Where you've rolled it, it's kind of like a layer that comes apart. I'll just go ahead and explain. I make about 30 breads and probably four or five of those I make a fairly regular basis. So... If I was to say, you know, the four or five that I make on a regular basis, let's, let's first rate those. One is just super easy and simple to make. Doesn't require a lot of ingredients. Doesn't require a lot of time. Not really my go-to recipe. My go-to recipe takes more time and takes more ingredients, but the flavor is superior. And then, you know, I've got just some favorite breads that I like, like the garlic and chives. You just can't beat a good garlic and chives bread. Um, my sourdough bread, you can't beat it. And actually, while I was going through the cancer treatment, my stepdad had me make a salt risen bread. I think I posted a recipe on that or a video. That's pretty amazing. That tastes like mozzarella cheese and it doesn't have any cheese in it. So now you kind of like know how my top recipes are. Everything else, I mean, I'm not saying that they're bad. You know, out of the 30 I make, but maybe the next 10 or 15 are definitely really good breads. And then the other ones are just like, eh. So if I was to rate this, let's say in my top 10. That, that would be a really good comparison because that's going to include just some of my favorites. And, and also like my top five favorites. And it's going to include like the next five out of what's left over. And if I was going to rate this bread... In that scale, where would it be at? And let me take another bite. Because I like the way that it's shaped and I like a way that it come out and I like the way that it breaks up into like a rolls, it kind of gives it a you know very unique type of bread. And the taste isn't off-putting or bad. The the dough's really springy. Um, it's it's still moist, it didn't dry out. I think I'm going to have to rate this on a scale of 1 being the highest and 10 being the lowest. I'm going to have to put it at about a 4. So yeah, it's it's definitely worth trying at least once. So give it a try. I think, you know, I, I kind of feel like if it was a little bit sweeter, even without the garlic and the chives, so maybe just a tad bit more sugar. And let me tell you, like, I just realized this too. I think the reason why I said that is because the inner part of the bread that, that you eat, it kind of has that, like, Hawaiian bread feel. Doesn't taste like Hawaiian bread, but it kind of has that, like, sponginess that Hawaiian bread's got. And I think that's why I th said if it was sweeter, it would be, it'd probably be a one or a two then. So, there you have it. As always, thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. I can't remember if I did the short of this bread or not. And since I need one for... This is the last one. I made three of these. They're about, uh, oh, I don't know, eight inches by four inches. And I made three miniature loaves of it. And this is what makes this so cool. Look at this. This is like... It's kind of like those 
like those um, spiral cinnamon rolls, but the bread is that way. Really good bread, too. Anyways, hopefully this will be good enough. And it's been in the microwave <laughs> since last night. So it's it's a probably I probably should have wrapped it up, but yeah, definitely worth making.